Hi, welcome back to Weeks Bay Reserve. I'm Claire Zubrick with Angela Underwood here, and we're part of the education team at the Reserve. Today we want to introduce you to our Squeaky Sneakers program, which takes students and adults to explore the bay, and then they express what they've learned through art. So we are going to sign again today. You may have seen our signing video before, and if you remember, this is a sign net that has floats at the top and weights at the bottom, and we pull them through the we pull it through the bay to catch different fish and shellfish. Now, do you remember what an estuary is from our previous videos? That's right. An estuary is a place where rivers and oceans come together and the water mixes and it serves as a nursery ground for fish and shellfish. So we are going to gear up and then we're gonna take the net out into the bay. Hayden, which are a big schooling type of fish and extremely important bait fish for larger fish and also birds. we caught a little juvenile mullet. See these little mullet? When you're in the bay and the rivers, you'll see mullet, larger mullet, jumping up, most likely trying to escape predators. Or shrimp, midheated. They get some beautiful blue and red colors on them. Some the large pinching claws and then the back paddles that help them swim. Why don't we pick this one up and see whether it's a male or female. So this is a female crab. She has a really large abdomen that's wide at the bottom. And that lets us know it's a female crab. If it was a male crab, this abdomen wouldn't be wide, but would be straight and narrow like a pencil. Why don't we watch as we let the crab go? up in the net. 
So croakers are a member of the drum family, and they're uh, called that because they have muscles that uh, restrict and make this vibrating sound or drumming sound. So now we want to turn it over to Nancy, who is our friend and art extraordinaire, so she can help lead you through an art experience. Hope you enjoyed your day today at the Bay. Welcome to Squeaky Sneakers. You probably just saw the video where Angela and Clara had just gone seine net fishing and caught some wonderful specimens. So I'm gonna show you today how we can draw them in the net. It's a great way to retain our learning. So I'm gonna go ahead and start right now. So one of the things that was caught uh, was a menhaden. And so here it is right here. And you're also gonna get some specks like this. And I guess it might be better for y'all if I drew it upside down, because then you could see it. That tests my skills every day. Mm -hmm. So here's the Manhattan. So one of the things, I, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw two of the poles. Oops, that one got a little crooked because I got some bees guys in here. Okay. And okay, so here we're gonna go. I'm gonna draw a shape like this. It has a tail that looks like, an, like a letter V over there. Oh, somebody's really trying to study with me right here. I'm gonna do a little fin right here. And this fin comes down like that. And this one just looks like a little rectangle and the fin on the top here simply just looks, to me it just looks like you're going up a mountain and down a mountain. Now we need to give all of them some gills to breathe right there. And one of the ways that the biologists know that I know what I'm drawing is if I have my markings and my specks in the right places. And looks like this menhaden has three little dots just like that. So I'm gonna draw these specimens a little bit larger than what was actually caught in the net because I want you, the viewer, you, the artist that's looking at this to be able to see it. So even though we all know that these are babies in the estuary, because these are babies that are gonna swim out to the ocean later, um, they may be small now and maybe the net was much bigger, but that's what an artist can do. I'm drawing it in a perspective that you'll be able to understand it and see it. So I might come over here and draw this crab. And I think the shape looks loosely a little bit like a football or a funny shaped hat. So do a shape like that. And it, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and draw him this way because when we peel it up in the net, they're all not gonna be going in the same direction because when they were caught or the current, they're not all following a line. They're going the path they wanna go. So I'm gonna maybe go ahead and give it two little eyes here. Might have some feelers. And the way that I draw the crab pinchers, I think it looks like Lego pieces. I usually do a little piece here, little Lego here. And when I come up here, I do a nice big curve, zigzag line in, do a bottom curve, zigzag line in and connect. So I'll do the same thing on the other side, a big curve and a bottom curve. And all you're doing is zigzag in, zigzag in till they meet. So that's the, okay, so let's see how many legs it has here. The legs are one, two, three, four segments. I think they are long, two, three, four segments. They kind of look like the shape of jelly beans or watermelon seeds. They're kind of long and narrow and oval. And all I have to do is count them. So there's three on each side with four segments each. So, and they, they can be going in different directions because they might be moving in the water or trying to get off the net. Okay, here's one of my favorite parts. They have these big ones here. This is how they swim. Cause these, look at, see, it's got a big wide base and I often draw it on here, the biologists do it. They look like marshmallows or like big paddles. Like when you're playing ping pong, they have a big surface area to help them paddle through the water. And maybe I'll give it some lines here to look like it's got a six pack. So I had one going up and one going down. So that's how I would get started. I'm gonna add some more to mine in a minute and you can pull up the reference sheet that we will attach to this lesson for you and you can add more species on here. The next thing I'm gonna do is once you have your species in here, however many you draw, then the next thing you do is you're gonna draw a line and this is how you're drawing the net. Since the net is behind the creatures that we caught, 
this is all behind, right? So that's why I'm stopping and going through like behind the species. Because right now all of these fish, this crab and this shrimp are all sitting on top of the net. So the net is just a string that goes both directions so they can't swim out. You don't have to worry about making straight lines. It's not a checkerboard table. Sometimes they might be spiraling because maybe they got pulled up when they got pulled up out of the water. So I'm just doing these curvy little lines. There we go. And one more thing that I like to add to my lesson is I love um, being a part of the environment. So I often draw some of my favorite shoes and I'm gonna put my favorite shoes I wear in the bay and they're Crocs because I can take them off when they get wet and put on different shoes. So right now I'm drawing my shoes at the bottom of the picture because I wanna show I'm part of it, okay? So right now we have all of these creatures right here and maybe I'll draw the water line is right about here. See, so my feet are still in the water but I laid the net with the species on the sand. This is how I would go about painting it. What I'm gonna do is I've made sure, once again, this is watercolor paper that I drew on with a Sharpie. This is um, about a 140 pound weight watercolor paper, which is not terribly expensive. You can buy at any craft store. This is my favorite set of paints. It's called Yarka, Y-A-R-K-A, -A, but you can use Prang, you can use Crayola, there's other ones. The first thing I like to do is put a few dots of water in each one of my colors. What I'm doing is waking up waking up the colors because you never want to dig in your watercolors you want to just lightly tap on it so you don't want to do so i'm just waking that up so they're ready to play one of the first things i'm going to do is let me take a smaller brush one of my favorite brushes is this little rectangle one little square because i can get in tiny places now right now i'm going to draw this crab and right now the paper is dry but the paint is wet so I'm gonna come in here and I can control it a lot if the paper's dry and just the brush is wet. Now here's a really neat trick. Let's say I didn't want it that dark. Let me show you a trick you can do. Let's say if I wanted a little lighter, I could dab some color out. Another thing I can do is come in here and pull some out and wipe my brush off. So you can control a lot with watercolor once you learn to play with it. So let's say that I want the uh, legs to be a little bit tan. Now watch what I'm doing here. I'm just filling up the legs and they might not look like they make sense yet because I'm going to come in here and add some water and by the time I smooth them all out and it's okay if you get a little bit out of the line. Some people worry about that so much. That's not the most important thing here. I know the crabs don't usually come a bright orange. I'm going to tell you a secret. The biologists tell me if I draw all the body parts in the right place, that they can tell what species it is. So as long as I have it drawn, that you know what it is. So I want these arms to be a little bit too much brown. So I'm gonna just blend it in. Sometimes they tell me that sometimes you might be able to see a little red on their fingernails. Is that how you know that might be the part that hurts? Isn't red the color of danger? Mm -hmm. So I'll give it a little red there. Okay, and I can smooth that out. So there's the crab, okay? You can come along, let me see how these guys look. So this one, so sometimes I color them the colors that they actually are. So I might put a little yellow in here and then I might decide, no, that's too much yellow. Maybe I want a little brown and maybe I want a little orange. And what I'll do is I'll blend it together Look at that pretty color that made. I didn't use any of the colors really bright. I just used a little water and a little bit of pigment. The secret with watercolors, you don't wanna put it on real thick and have it dry sticky. Okay, so there's that guy. I'm gonna draw the others a little bit quickly. I'm gonna give him a little gray, maybe a little brown, maybe a bigger brush. Okay. So sometimes if I just want to have a little color in it, look at how watery I made that. I kind of like how that's going across there. Sometimes I draw, paint my fish 
and I make them all bright colors. But the, the, the biologists and the fishermen still like it because they still know what fish it is because I got the marking on it. This fish is this one right here. See how it has a little line right here? So this is a drum or a croaker because of the sound. See, and I have that little line and that the kind of spiky hairstyles it has there and its fins. So that's what I'm doing so far. I'll turn it around so you can see. Okay, and I'm just gonna add just a touch of color in the shrimp. I know they don't come out bright red, but sometimes when I sell my paintings to restaurants, they ask me to paint them the colors of when you're eating them. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes they wanna see what the, the fish might look like when people are eating it when it's been cooked. So you can paint it any color that you want as long as you're paying attention to the detail. I'm gonna come in here and add some water. My water is just a little bit muddy here, but it was muddy at the bay today because it rained recently. So I'm gonna add some water. This is called wet on wet. When we're working with wet paper, like this, and I'm gonna come across here, watch. I'm gonna come across here, and I'm gonna water ski across. I'm gonna water ski across here. Like it's the currents in the water. And maybe, maybe there was a little blue reflecting in the sky, especially if you think the water is a pretty color. And you don't have to, you can blend it in. Go away, little flies. So I would go ahead and paint this the colors I wanted, okay? You can add a little brown or black. You can paint your poles. Probably not gonna paint my neck because I already drew that with a Sharpie, okay? I might paint my shoes real quickly. Remember I told you my favorite Crocs. I love my favorite Crocs. They're kind of a a blue, but you know what? They're not this color blue. They're almost got a little green in it. So sometimes I change the colors, almost like a teal or a turquoise, so I can do that. So there's my Crocs in the water to show that I'm sharing the water with these fish. The last step I might do, oops, should have had a cleaner water, but that's okay. I'm gonna come in here and add a little bit. This is what I'm gonna do, just to show it looks like we step in the sand. And when you step in the sand, Maybe it's a little bit of brown or yellow. I just want it to look like places where maybe this is where we walked up carrying the pole, okay? So, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of light colors. You can smudge it out. I just want it to look like the sand has people walking in it. So that's what I did. You could add some of that color behind here so it looks like there's little footprints in the sand. And that's our lesson. And when you're finished, I would definitely encourage you to write your name on the top of the painting. When I'm finished with this one, I love to say, this is Miss Nancy's catch of the day. What did you catch today? Thank you so much for being with us here at Weeks Bay and Squeaky Sneakers.